Hey friends, Joel Richardson here, and this is The Underground. Welcome to this episode of The Underground, a program that explores the testimony of the biblical prophets, the gospel of Jesus Christ, current events, and how all of these things relate to you and me. Well, in terms of uh, news, in terms of the unfolding of significant geopolitical and prophetic events, uh, it has been a very busy week. Um, we just had Dalton Thomas on with us. We recorded him yesterday, only hours before Israel launched a uh, tremendous battery of missiles against various Iranian positions in Syria, just over Israel's northern border. Um, this all falls on the heels of President Donald Trump's uh, speech, where he came out and exited um, the Iranian nuclear deal. Uh, and then he followed that with a, a very direct address to the Iranian people. Um, again, this is something that he said he was going to do during his campaign. He said he was going to pull out of the Iranian deal. He said it was a horrible deal. Um, I personally agree very much. Um, but this has obviously dramatic ramifications, regional ramifications, geopolitical ramifications, political and prophetic ramifications. And so we are blessed to be joined right now uh, by Ali. Uh, Ali is a pastor who is working in Iran, um, and he leads um, a, a segment of the underground church there. So um, we're blessed to uh, be joined by Ali. Ali. Ali, thank you so much for being with us on the underground again. Thank you, Joe, for having us. Well, what an exciting time to be on the underground. So listen, I, I want to just jump right in, um, because I think a lot of people are curious. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, those of us who we're, we're, we're interested in politics, we're interested in prophecy, but there's also the very real human element to this. You know, we have, and this is the part that sometimes I think students of prophecy we miss, we have brothers and sisters in Iran. Um, and so issues like this affect our brothers and sisters. It doesn't just affect the Iranian regime. It doesn't just affect our enemies. It doesn't just affect those that are the, um, the stewards of a radical Shia Islam, but it affects you. It affects our brothers and sisters. So first of all, I just want to begin from the perspective of an Iranian living in Iran. Um, what was your perception of Obama, President Obama's deal with Iran, the nuclear deal, you know, again, he literally flew in pallets of money, um, billions of dollars to the regime. How did this affect you? How did this affect the underground church? And sort of what was the uh, common, you know, man on the street Iranian perspective on the uh, Obama nuclear deal? Well, the first thing is when Obama gave those pallets full of money, the people on the street were so dismayed because the Iranian regime was on the brink of uh, faulting. You know, they didn't have any money. The economy was tank tanking. The currency was tanking. We were seeing um, inflation rates that, you know, um, we've never seen before. So the Iranian people, the man on the street was so disappointed that Obama did this because remember, you know, um, the Iranian government does not represent the Iranian people. The Iranian people love America, they love Israel, they uh, love people. Um, we remember before the revolution, you know, uh, even Tehran and Tel Aviv had a direct flight. That's how close they were uh, diplomatically and relationally. So people were very upset that Obama did this and um, gave authority and gave power to a regime that's been so wicked for them, that's brought just uh, cursing, you know, upon the country that's brought death to the country. That's the social aspect of the, you know, what people are saying on the street. But at the church level, uh, you know, us that are 
basically boots on the ground. Um, it was awful that he sent this money. Why? Because the first thing the Iranian government did with this money was hire 6,000 new police, secret police just for Tehran. And so that made our job very hard. Um, arrests were happening, um, just made us, ha made us, you know, rethink everything. We had to change everything actually in our strategy because um, Iran started clapping down anything that wasn't pro-regime and pro-government. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing is I don't think a lot of, um, let's say that segment of the church, um, the American church that supported President Obama, um, I don't think they thought about how this impacted their brothers and sisters on the street. You think about that, six thousand new secret police just in that one city alone and they're primarily as you said you know sort of hunting down um, those who represent um, uh, a challenge to the regime and of course they because their entire regime is founded upon built upon this idea that they are the representatives of the coming 12th imam um, the church, which represents a very different spiritual vision, is a profound challenge to them. They feel threatened by the gospel, by the gospel of the kingdom, by these people whose allegiance is to a different kingdom. And so I think it's important that yeah, people hear that, that this deal that Obama made, it was, it was uh, viewed negatively by the majority of the Iranian people as well as the church. And, you know, and I'll just say this, too. In many ways, I view, when I look at Iran... I sort of view it as two Irans. On one hand, there is the Persia um, of ancient times. There's the Persia that has always had, in, in many ways, sort of positive relationship with Israel. You know, you think of Cyrus, uh, who you know gave the uh, edict to allow the temple to be rebuilt, to allow the Jews to go back home. There's sort of just such a rich biblical history of relationship between Persia, uh, the Persian people, and and the Jews. And, you know, that's something that we need to be praying into and supporting and partnering with. But then there's also the other Iran, which is the Iran that has come under this suffocating, negative, we'll even say demonic influence of Islam. And this is the regime that's holding on. And a lot of people don't realize that the majority of the people in Iran are in conflict with the regime. The majority of people in Iran, they're very Western friendly. The mosques are empty, and they want to see the downfall of the regime because it has brought, they have, they have uh, continually foisted that suffocating influence onto the people. And so it is, it's good to hear that, um, that the Iranian people, in many ways, I mean, I know not across the boards, but that they are sort of in partnership with us. They are yearning for freedom. They want freedom. They want to return to the days of, you know, individual expression and, and so on and so forth. So now we... Um, we transition. Uh, now, here we are a couple years later. Um, President Trump gives this speech. He exits the Iranian nuclear deal, and he imposes new sanctions. So now this is going to impact the man on the street in Iran in a, in a negative way financially. Um, but what's the perspective now, the man on the street, in terms of, of Trump exiting? And again, I'm sure there's a fairly wide range of opinion, but what are you sort of seeing and feeling and uh, hearing there on the streets? Um, well, first day, you know, Trump has brought new respect, I guess, into foreign dipl uh, diplomacy because he's a man of his word. And on the other aspect is he's so unpredictable that um, it's keeping all these regimes, even like as you see North Korea on its toes, like maybe we really need to do something. Right now, the, the, the word on the street is they're waiting, you know, because Trump hasn't officially launched new sanctions yet. So they're saying, but right now, um, since uh, Persian New Year, which was March 21st till today, which is uh, sometime in May, um, we've already had 35% inflation and we've lost over 40% value of our currency because of what Trump has been doing by um, changing his uh, Secretary of State and also changing his NSA coordinator, who are both very um, anti-Iran deal and you know anti-regime. So um, these factors have 
immediately played into the economy. The economy is shot right now. Everyone's basically twiddling their thumbs because um, there is no way for the for the common man to even who has a simple store that buys products from outside of Iran, like for example in Turkey, Dubai, other places. He can't buy anything because there are no U.S. dollars. There's no currency that they can use because the Iranian currency is not accepted anywhere, and the American dollar now has been frozen. So um, there's no one buying and selling gold, there's no one buying and selling dollars, there's no one buying and selling even euros. So the whole economy is shot right now. Everyone's kind of just waiting, you know. It's kind of like, you know, a thriller right now. They're all waiting for the, the climax. Like, where is this going to lead? But everyone knows that a climax is going to come very soon. So let, let me ask you this question. Um, I also saw in the news, I think yesterday, it was actually... Uh, in the Iranian parliament, you had people burning American flags, saying death to America, this sort of thing. Um, you know, what about that? You know, I think your average American looks at that and says, well, wait a minute, you're telling me that the average Iranian actually has an affinity uh, toward the United States, but then they see this sort of American flag burning. Um, you know, what do you say to the American people, to Westerners, when they see this sort of thing in the news? So um, one thing that the West and Americans need to realize is that, you know, Congress and Parliament, um, those representatives are are freely um, chosen in the sense that, you know, someone has a desire to become like a senator or a parliament person and they put their name and if they get enough votes, they win. But inside of Iran, those names are actually filtered. So any name that wants to become someone in parliament, they have to pass the the filtering process and of course those people who pass the filtering process are pro-regime you know pro uh theocracy um uh, radical shiites so what you're seeing is not true democracy in the sense that these were freely elected individuals representing people these are individuals that we had to choose between worse and evil so what you're seeing on the TV is just uh, a skewed version or a skewed view of the Iranian people because these people do not represent Iran. Yeah, and unfortunately, this is the nature of news. You know, they always want the negative. If it bleeds, it leads, uh, this sort of thing. And they don't always convey the idea of what you're saying, which is that, um, in fact, the average Iranian on the street is opposed to this uh, current regime. Now, in terms of uh, that part of the speech where President Trump uh, actually addressed the Iranian people directly, how was that perceived? Um, what, what's, what is your perception of how it was uh, received and perceived? You know, he spoke very well. You know, he spoke the truth. You know, uh, Iran is a civilization that has over 5,000 years of history, uh, was um, the first nation to have the first human rights, you know, King Cyrus on on that um, cylinder, wrote the first human rights. Even our Bill of Rights come from Cyrus's um, human rights. So we've always been um, very open, uh, very friendly. Like I said, before the revolution, Iran was the only country uh, that had F-14 Tomcats, you know, after the United States. That's how great of a relationship they had with America. and. You know, right now, for example, if an Iranian wants to travel anywhere in the world, they needed a visa. But Iran was probably the fourth passport in the world that didn't need visas to anywhere in the world. So what I'm trying to say is this regime has brought so much curses. And what you're seeing is not true because the Iranian civilization for 6,000 years was completely different than what you're seeing in the last 40 years. Yeah, for sure. So listen, um... You know, again, you're working with the underground church there. Uh, Iran has the fastest growing uh, church in the world right now, roughly 20% growth per year. The Lord is moving in Iran, and as I always say, if you want to maximize your return in this life, you know, our uh, expenditures, our finances, our resources, our energies, our prayers— it's really very simple. You partner with what God is doing, and this is one of the main reasons that I've given myself to partner um, with you, with GCM, Global Catalytic Ministries, um, because I love hearing about what the Lord is doing. How can we pray for you right now, the underground church in Iran? How can we support you? What can we pray for? How can we partner with what God is doing with you guys back here in the United States? How can we, uh, how can we join you? Well, first is prayer. You know, if you guys aren't praying, you're going to see a lot more arrests happening inside of Iran. So by you guys are praying, 
praise the Lord, we haven't had any arrests in the last two years. And the, the most recent arrest we had was a uh, uh, mistaken identity. So they let the leader go. So um, we need your prayers because it's prayers that move the people. It's prayers that move the heavenlies and it's prayers that protects us. You know, we start with prayer. We we're in the middle of prayer and we end with prayer. So definitely we need prayer. And also just come and partner with us. Imagine, you know, you get to uh, change the history of a nation. Imagine you being part of a transformation. You know, imagine maybe what if next year there's revolution inside of Iran? What if next year Iran opens up and you could have helped this year to bring thousands of people to Christ. Right now, God is moving so powerfully through dreams, visions, healings. I just was talking to my leader today and they prayed for someone who was sick in bed. And five seconds later, she got up. She's like, I don't know what happened. I'm completely healed. And she's like, tell me about this Jesus. And her sister's like, yeah, tell me about this Jesus. How is this happening? God is moving. God is moving. You know, this is not, uh, this is the real book of Acts that you're seeing that how Peter and Paul went out and John went out, laid hands and people were healed and people were coming to faith in the thousands. That's the same thing that's happening inside of Iran. It's a, you know, it's a Kairos moment. And if you remember where that came from, it came from the book of Esther. And if you remember where Esther was, she was in Iran. So we have another Kairos moment. You know, China had their moment, they're still having it. Russia had their moment, but it ended when the Soviet Union opened up. Eastern Europe, the same way. Well, Iran, if one day it opens up, this moment that we have right now will pass. So we need a jump because this window of opportunity is closing as we speak. So it's, um, I'll put the link up on the screen, Global Catalytic Ministries. Um, again, I want to encourage everybody, this is a ministry that is worthy of your support, both prayer and financially, and um, we're always needing new partners, new ongoing, uh, regular prayer and financial partners. And um, I can think of few other ministries in the earth that are that are worthy um, of your support. So listen, Ali, it was great uh, chatting with you. We'll continue to pray. Um, again, as sanctions are imposed on Iran, I know it's gonna sort of affect everything but we are indeed praying for the gospel to go forth and for the Lord's will to be done with regard to this current regime. And, um, you know, it's ultimately in the Lord's hands. But we're watching, we're praying, we're behind you, we support you, we love you. And uh, we sure appreciate you coming on and we'd love to have you on more often. Um, there's always news coming out of Iran. It's great to have an inside perspective in terms of what's going on. And we really appreciate you being with us. Well, thank you, Joel. You know, it's a precious time right now. It's so exciting to be in the Middle East. Um, you know, right now, Iran is a perfect storm. You know, it has social unrest, uh, economic unrest, political unrest, and now even religious unrest. So this is the time that God is moving. So thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to our time next time. Amen. Amen. All right, friends. Well, that's uh, all the time that we have for now. As always, I want to thank you so much for being with us. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, I'm Joel Richardson, and this is The Underground.